to Making Sense of It with me, Emma Kenny. And I'm Pete Smith. And today we have a guest. Yes, finally, we've managed to do it. We've managed to get somebody off the streets, drag them through the door, give them a Diet Coke, sit them in the chair and say, you're doing the podcast with us this week now. I was away from Stray. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andy. Andy, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Andy. I am a writer for The Gay UK and I also work in a cinema. So Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Literally a media mogul. I, I am a media mogul. <laughs> Beat to the ground. <laughs> Eyes to the ground. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about a whole heap of things, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess one of the reasons that we've kind of got in contact with each other is through Twitter. Because we do love a bit of a Twitter family. Yes. Everybody knows I'm a bit obsessed with my Twitter family. And Andy and me have been conversing over various matters of great importance for some time now. Mm. When he volunteered to throw himself in front of this train. I did. <laughs> I didn't think you'd say yes. I was like, I, uh, to begin with, I was like... I was jokingly ask her, can I be a guest? And then you turn around and went, yes. Yeah. So I was like, oh, what, what have I got myself into? This. <laughs> put yourself directly into this, this Andy. And soon you will know what it's exactly like to be involved in this train wreck of what can be called a podcast. Yeah. Um, in a kitchen. In a kitchen. In kitchen. It really is in a kitchen as well. You know, some people might pay for a studio setup that actually looks like a kitchen, but isn't a kitchen. But this really is a kitchen. So, again... Keeping it real. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, how you've arrived, and the issues that are important to you that we're going to discuss today. Oh, God, what would you like to know? All of it. Ask me anything. <laughs> it's all of it. Don't feel any pressure, just all of it. <laughs> I just want you to know that I am soundbite queen on TV, uh, yeah. so just imagine that whilst you're delivering this next uh, range of re- you know, requests. That... Range of requests? Range of requests. It's, a range of, it's not a range of requests at all. Range of statements about yourself. Range of statements about that kind of stuff. Well, well, you were asking before how I got started with yeah. writing with the Gay UK, and it strangely enough, it's a similar sort of setup with how I got talking to you in the first place. It all started on Twitter. They followed me on there, and I was like, okay, wonder what they are. They're obviously just starting out, getting new followers and what have you. And I followed them back, and they put a tweet out saying, um, "Are you opinionated? Would you like to write for us?" And I said, I have opinions about <laughs> writing. I can write. What would you opinions. like me to do? And they uh, DM'd or PM. I don't know what yeah. it is these days. It's down with the kids, whatever. DM'd. They get in touch with you on the in <laughs> yeah. box. And they said, can you write an article, submit it, we'll see if we like it, and if we like it, we'll publish it. I thought, okay. And at the time, it was when uh, Caitlin Jenner had just... Sort of started, started the transition. And that, it was about a week after she'd done that interview with that, Diane Sawyer. Right. And I thought, I'll do an article about that because it, it's, like, it's in the news now. And my first article was um, how Caitlyn Jenner has changed our definition and our perception of transgendered individuals. And I wrote it and I thought, I'm quite happy with this. I'll see what they think. And two days later, they published it. Wow. And I just thought, oh, I'm happy about it. <laughs> and I carried on writing article after article. And I did so many different types of ones. I've done everything from like op-ed pieces, like serious op-ed pieces, to silly lists of things, like uh, top ten things that gay men hate on the gay scene. Which is number one? Sorry? What's number one? Oh, you can't um, introduce a top ten and not give us at least the most important one. Oh, I can't one. remember what it was. I, Throw I wrote it. over Have years. a guess. But the, the, <laughs> There's many things, like the, the whole segregation of, uh, of the community. Um, so what you mean, like in Manchester, where you've got what would be known as the gay village? That, that no, kind no of segregation is... within the community, okay. not segregation oh, of okay. the community. Segregation so within the individuals. community. Yeah, okay. Where in a sense that you can be judged if you're not 21 years old, if you're not tall, if you're not skinny... Wow. And if you're not good looking, and if you're not white, which I think is horrendous. So it's like part... prejudice within prejudice. Oh yeah. Which kind of makes you go, wow, that's a bit of a juxtaposition there. Yeah. But like actually, where you should be included, you feel excluded. Yeah, it's utterly ridiculous. So to is me. that hard for like guys who are coming up through their like, shall we say, sexual experiences, starting to realise there's a whole world out there of people who are like them, and then suddenly they involve themselves, and maybe they're short, fat maybe of an ethnic origin yeah. and you're saying that that would actually be quite difficult for them it can be in some, in some cases and i i don't agree with that kind of segregation oh you should not be judged on 
race, gender, sexuality, how you identify, because obviously with, with this most recent trend of gender non-binary and uh, gender fluid. That's right. LGB, which when I was growing up was what it was, LGB. Yeah. Yeah. Then LGBT, then mm -hmm. LGBTQ, yeah. then etc. Now there's a yeah. long, long, there, long there's list. There's a lot, but I also have a slight issue with that. Tell me. Well, I call it self segregation, ah. where um, people who identify as these other letters, they can get very, very pissy about the idea that if you don't know what the letters are and you don't know what they mean, you can get shouted down, and it's like. I'm not doing this on purpose. I just don't know. Please educate me. Yeah. Um, That's the interesting thing, though, isn't it? Where you get into a society, and I think that certainly in my experience in the last 10 years, a lot of people have got scared of mm. asking questions just full stop. I mean, I don't just mean in the LGBTQ community I'm talking about, just in general, because you feel like if you're ignorant, then yeah. people are going to be angry. But yeah. actually that incites ignorance because people don't yeah. change their ideas and don't talk to people and get educated. Yeah. It's not a crime to not know something. No. Yeah, and I've heard of people, my partner, he knows somebody who got, they identify as uh, gender non-binary. Right. And they got very angry at the, uh, the announcement on the London Underground of ladies and gentlemen. So just for people who are listening that don't really understand the whole LGBTQ, etc., etc., what actually is gender non-binary? Well, gender non-binary means individuals who don't see themselves as either male or female. They just identify themselves as a person. They don't subscribe to the <laughs> notion of... Yeah masculinity, they don't subscribe to the notion of femininity, they just are, which is fine. Um, but there's also this other idea of um, gender fluid, but. which is people who, they can sometimes feel more masculine, they can sometimes feel more feminine, and depending on what mood they're in, depends on what pronouns they prefer to use for themselves. They can either use male pronouns, female pronouns, or they'll use uh, they, them, or even the new ones, which is like Z, X, I to describe yeah. themselves. So that must be really confusing for somebody who's maybe already a little bit ignorant. It can You know, even for me. Well, so it was a good programme, actually, a while back, with a young person who, as you said, like in the moods, it depended what mood they were in. Yeah. And they would get up in the morning, and if they felt like they were in a male was mood, that, they would be that, uh, dressed um, as, a, as, a, as a male. And then was, was that a, covered on Good Morning Britain, though, and Piers Morgan was just like... Oh, I mean, you know, I, I just find this so confusing. I yeah. literally wanted to reach into the screen and yeah. punch him in the face. You'll hear that there's quite a theme throughout our podcast, which is me <laughs> wanting to elicit violence on people. And I've unfortunately, <laughs> whilst I'm sure he's very nice when you meet him in real life, I often want to punch him in the face. Yeah. Because what he'll do is he will take something like this issue, which if you are sitting at home and you maybe haven't had the most enlightened experience right and you hear some what on that day looks like a girl yeah saying but tomorrow I might be a boy and then I might be a girl again the trivialization of it yeah. on daytime TV blows my mind because yeah. what you often see is an individual who's just genuinely trying to have a very honest dialogue with the public and go look hey I'm pretty confused by this as well. Yeah. And I'm just inviting you to see my confusion and to understand that your acceptance can help me to feel less confused and more authentic. And instead, you get this almost middle America, I would say. It's almost yeah. like the middle America. Because anybody who's ever been to America, you'll know this like 5% is enlightened and 95% are just scary. Yeah. That's the way, and I can evidence that. I was in Baton Rouge for a while and uh, got told that women, blacks and gays were not welcome. Mm. So with respect, I've been there. And yes, I do have some scars. But the truth is that for people who are watching that and then hearing what is considered a presenter of great standing, yeah. trivialising it that way, that yeah. must be even for you, a gay man, yeah. that is where prejudice begins. Yeah, it starts with what most people would perceive as a throwaway comment. That's it, yeah. I mean, there's been an occurrence where another morning TV presenter has was talking about um, Courtney Act, 
who was on Celebrity yeah, Big Brother. Yeah, who year. was amazing. Yes, exactly. And was and better looking than most women. <laughs> which is horrifying. But, <laughs> but Courtney or Shane identified as gender non-binary. That's right. And also was probably one of the most educated yeah. and tolerant oh, yeah, and absolutely. peaceful in his, her experience yeah. in the world. Amazing. Yeah. I didn't actually uh, see any of that. So uh, You should watch some of the clips. Yeah. They yeah. are amazing. Yeah, but there, there was there was a, a morning presenter who, who shall remain nameless, mm. but he basically said that Courtney, uh, Shane must not like himself because he has to dress up as Courtney. And that's not it. Courtney is just part of who Shane sees himself as. That's right. And Shane generally uses male pronouns. And I used to be a goth, and I used to like dressing up as a goth, and yeah. I liked myself. Yeah. So I can't believe they actually said that, to be honest. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm a bit sort of shocked that anybody that is a TV presenter no, will yeah. name, will remain nameless, I mean, but I can't they, believe they actually even said that. He didn't that. say it on air, he said it on Twitter. Even worse. Yeah, he said it on Twitter, <laughs> and it's still up there. Mm. And but I think there's a tolerance in our society yeah. for those kind of glib comments. And mm. also that assumption that if you don't fit what is, let's be honest, a schema created by a society, mm. if you don't fit that, then there must be an issue with you. They yeah. don't see that the issues with society. Look, a few hundred mm. years ago, if I got married, I lost everything. I had no identity whatsoever. I was just my husband's property. Yeah. So what we know is that society is wrong a lot. Mm. You know, before that, there were times in series where kids of nine and ten could get married and that was the way it was and you were having babies at twelve. Mm. That was seen as normal. Society changes. But there is a massive problem with that. Still, the isms around yeah. that kind of situation. And yeah. somebody who's gay, how was that for you? Like, you know, you're a not quite middle-aged, you know. Let's, let's, not be, yet, honest. Not let's be honest. middle age is 60, and that's official. Oh, I'm absolutely. Middle-aged is like you're, 17. You're, you're a mere oh. child, a mere child. But um, having grown up in a, let's say, a society that didn't have the internet. Yeah. Where, because I think that the internet's a great connector. As much mm -hmm. as people slag it off, I just think, you know, when I was working with my first trans client, when I was green as in yeah. therapy, green as, and really had never even met a guy who wanted to be a woman. Mm. And back in the day, you're talking a long time ago, I was only just qualified, I'd only just started kind of working in that way, and really that wasn't my environment or area or training, but there again, it wasn't very many people's anyway. I yeah. remember thinking, how do I play this? Is this actually something psychological that I'm dealing with? And of course, no, it wasn't. It was just generally somebody who needed to transition, and that's yeah. the key. But I look back, and there was nowhere that I could say, let's go online and see where else people are affected this way, and who, who else I can connect you with. Whereas back in the days where I used to run the mental health side of college, yeah. What I then did when a kid would come and see me and would be identified, I'd be like, okay, what group can we put you in with? And oh, where's that fashion? What yeah. look do you want to go for? Because that was a big part of it. You know, what look do you want to take on when you do the transitioning socially? Yeah. Now I can do that. So you've kind of come through a situation as a gay, you know, man, being a gay boy, yeah. for example, and not having that direct access. How has that journey been for you? Well, for me, it was... It was very confusing because I came out what would be considered quite late. I came out at 21 years old and it was a, it was a strange experience for me because I'd not long started a new job and these were people that didn't know me so they couldn't prejudge me. And a friend of mine came to see me and she was a lesbian and um, the woman I was working with, she said, oh, is that your girlfriend? And I said, oh, no, she's gay. And this woman said, oh, are you gay? And, I, and to begin with, I said, oh, no, I'm bisexual. Because I thought, Ease I'm easing myself, Ease myself into in. this. Yeah. And See how she reacts? That was the first time I'd ever openly admitted wow. to somebody that I wasn't straight. And then it just kind of snowballed from there that I realised, no, I'm not actually bisexual. I mean, I can appreciate when a woman is attractive and I can say, yes, yeah, good looking lady. But I'm not attracted to her. No. No. So I see myself as gay. But that's because it's kind of the label that's easiest to just say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel like now, like with all the access to these, do you think it's easier to come out as a gay I, man? These or? days, I think it's a lot easier for kids to come out. I think kids these days know what gay is before they know they're gay themselves. Because it's, it's all over the internet. 
and obviously for good reason, but they have this understanding. I mean, my niece, uh, my niece and nephew, um, the oldest ones are nine, and they understand that Uncle Andy lives with Uncle Danny. And they know that we're a family, like mummy and daddy are a family. So they understand that, but they've never really sort of asked questions. It's just not a big deal to no, them. Yeah. No, no. It's not an issue. I feel really lucky because my uncle's gay and he was born in the 40s, which for anybody who's young, they won't appreciate what that was like. You know, it was illegal. You went to prison for Until it. Until 1957. You went sometimes into um, psychiatric units. Um, it was a really, really challenging experience for him. And it's something that I think scarred him hugely. Oh, without a doubt, it scarred Uncle Derek. Yeah, it's, he's, yeah, it's he's, still he's, he's still... He's um, still... Even like spirit, he looks at the spiritual side of things and doesn't believe in it. He doesn't believe that, in believe it at in. all. He has mm. no spiritual beliefs because as far as he's concerned, if there was a God, they would not have made so many people so sad. And yeah. also, yeah. he, of course, was around when HIV took out huge mm. amounts of his community. Yeah. So, you know, he's lived through kind of yeah. punishment. Yeah. But what I'm really thankful for is the addition of him in our family because of the fact that I think like when I was 11 years of age, I basically found a stash of porn that was definitely not straight porn. Yeah. You know, it was the first time I'd ever seen a hard on it in my life. And there were no <laughs> other women involved in the pictures, you know. And I kind of, even at 11, I mean, it's pretty wise me anyway. And I was like, oh, Uncle Derek's clearly gay. Because um, they were in my, it certainly wasn't for my grandma. And it was at my grandma's and then mm. she was definitely not looking at it. Um, and I remember sitting around the table, I was 11 years old and we were kind of having a family dinner. And I just said, is Uncle Derek gay? And there was kind of like, silence and my sister and brother like looked at me and I went because the family's a gay porn at grandma's and it's not grandma's and my mum <laughs> went um, uh, yes he's gay and I just said so is the guy you introduce is his friend his partner and my mum said yes and I said will you never do that again I don't want to not know yeah. who my uncle's partner is yeah. because that was so important to me and I'm really lucky that my parents as much as they are come from a working class background, although she'd never have that now. She's she's well bought herself into the middle classes. She shops occasionally. Yeah, ever, ever say, ever that say that's okay. Mom. Bloody hell. <laughs> you know, she's bought herself Karen Mill in seconds, you know what I mean? She's mm. she's well middle class now. But you know, she's not middle but anyway she well, thinks Karen Millen's going bust, so they're not gonna, uh. she, she thinks she's middle class, but I love her to pieces. <laughs> but the point is, even though they were like very working class, left school at thirteen, did all of those things, oh my God, they have got such big hearts, haven't they? Oh, and yeah. my uncle was never anything but completely accepted but you know what my, my granddad didn't accept it my grandma didn't talk about it mm. but they were like two peas in the pod but I can't imagine what it must be like even today to some degree growing up feeling like it's not quite as simple for you yeah do you know what I mean yeah. just that sense of it. it's not quite as simple but not because there's anything wrong no but because society no matter what I see it on social media a lot I see mm. a lot of negatives still thrown at the gay populations you know whether it's women or men Forget trans, I had a massive row yeah. not so long ago on social media with a friend mm. because he basically was slating social transitioning of children because mm. some horrible bitch in Australia was basically telling oh, everybody yeah. how, you know, Terrible. don't get me to call a he a she, you know what I mean? Well, I'd like to call you a bitch. Yeah. That's what I'd like to call you, bitchy American, Australian woman who just wanted a viral <laughs> video. So, you know, for you, you must have seen all of that. And so yeah. you must be able to empathise quite a lot, let's say, with the trans community. Oh, who absolutely, are now 100%. I, I mean, I will happily refer to anyone however they want to identify. If you want to be known by male pronouns, if you want to be known by female pronouns, if you just want to be known as they or them, that is what I will call you. But... Does it ever piss you off a bit? Are there ever times where it feels like it's become so... I don't mean that in a... I don't mean sound... Well, maybe I did sound a bit flippant then. And what I'm trying to say is... Is there ever a moment... Okay, so what I mean is I'm owning this now, right? Sometimes people piss me off with their PC bollocks, right? And that's not because I don't think political correctness is important. I just mm. think it separates us sometimes. So mm. there have been certain situations where I know that I want to say something mm. that I feel is nothing to do with trying to insult anyone. It's much more about me just putting a position of, well, maybe if you think about it from ABC, yeah. and I don't, because I know somebody's going to go, well, yeah. that's offensive. And that kind of worries me because then I'm like, well, if I'm not going to ask that question yeah. with all of my education and experience, who's going to ask that question? Yeah. And then what's getting lost 
in the offence versus the importance. Yeah. I mean, it, it sort of got to a point where what annoys me with the self-segregation thing is when... If it's just something that I don't know, like if I'm meeting somebody for the first time yeah. and they are presenting as either male or presenting as female, that's how I'm going to refer to yes. them as because that's... How you see. That's how I see it. You know, that's how I perceive it. If somebody walked up to me and they're presenting as male, then I'm going to use male pronouns. Yeah. But... If they turn around and say, oh, I'm sorry, I actually identify as female, I prefer if you would use female pronouns with me, I'd be, okay, that's fine, yeah, go ahead, I, I will use that and I will continue to use that, but it's when they have a chip on their shoulder about it and they get pissy as anything about it, it's like, oh my god, did you just assume my gender? It's like, I hate that phrase. That's what you were hate saying, that so, yeah, that's what you were saying so earlier much. and that's what you were asking there. It's, that's, yeah, yeah. No, I really hate the phrase, did you just assume my gender? Yeah. Yes, I did just assume yeah. your gender, Yeah. but tell me otherwise, educate me, yeah. help me learn, yeah. and I will refer to you by whatever you want to be known as. Because it's scary yes. when people are aggressive. Oh, it's terrifying. I hate it. That's why I call it self-segregation, because they're segregating themselves by being so angry about something that is not deliberate. I am not deliberately misgendering you. I just don't know you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you're I, just making a set of assumptions based on your societal schema with the way that somebody dresses yeah. and making that judgment because yeah. you have like a second in life to make a judgment, don't yeah, you? Exactly, you do. I mean, I, I'm happy to ask though. Yeah. I met, uh, I met a, she generally, she prefers to be known as she, but she's gender non-conforming or gender non-binary. And it was the first time I met her and I asked her, I actually said, you know, what pronoun do you prefer me to use? And she said, it doesn't matter. You can use either female or male. Oh. And she was, she was born female, but she identifies as non-binary now. But because... But she's cool about... Oh, yeah. She's making it easy for you. Yeah. She's letting you in. Yeah, See, no. that's the thing. I, I get what you're talking about when yeah. you talk about anger and hate yeah. and things like that. Because when somebody's brought up in a world which is very tolerant to some degree, but still has a long way to go in uh -huh. the UK, even though uh -huh. we're definitely a tolerant nation, mm. the problem is that people are fed with that feeling of isolation, non-belonging, that they're different. They yeah. get Piers Morgan pointing at them saying yeah. you're different. That pumps that. Mm. But then because they feel so upset and aggrieved, yeah. whenever anybody tries to check in or get in, yeah. it gets thrown out because it's like they can't, do anything but throw that rage yeah. and that makes me really sad because yeah. that kind of then pumps that cycle yeah. where there isn't a way in and I get yeah. it because if I felt excluded and if I felt isolated and I felt that I hadn't been loved the only people I'd want to be around were people who fully accepted yeah. me and the other thing and I talk to people about this in therapy quite a lot we talk about it quite a lot in our relationship is I know where all that comes from yeah. because I remember years ago I'm pansexual so I'll have anything yeah it's as simple as that. I like anything. <laughs> as long as it's consenting and mm. it's alive, I don't care. If I yeah. fancy her, I'll have Obviously sex with not you. Like not like animals. Now. Not animals. I just that. said, <laughs> when can a chihuahua consent for a start? So clearly there has to be a human involved. <laughs> mm. All right? Oh, I'm married now, so I would identify yeah. more as a heterosexual woman because I'm married to a man who's heterosexual, right? But yeah. I'd still say my predilections are far and yeah. wide absolutely far and wide mm. I appreciate very many things from trans to women to it doesn't really matter but Pete's my yeah. choice right I think it's more of a societal thing that you project this label yes. onto yourself that's anyway right. because that's how it's just easier for society to view you yeah exactly so I, I, I say I'm a gay man yeah but I've done drag yeah I've done drag and I find it fun but I just see it as an art form yeah and I can't wait to get it off at the end of the day. No, no exactly. But when I'm in full drag, I, I feel take like on a completely a, different I feel like a pretty lady for an hour or so. The, the irony for me is that when I just describe myself there in that way, and my uncle still is disappointed that I'm not a full lesbian. He can't handle it, can he? No. He accepts that I've had bisexual experiences, etc. Mm. So he kind of appreciates me more than my other brother and sister because he feels like I relate. But he still says to me, I just... I was rooting. I was rooting that you would be like on fully on side. He was like that, wasn't he? He was always <laughs> like that. But I can remember how angry I was as a young person. 
And I can remember that anybody who violated what I thought was right, yeah. I would shoot down with such vitriolic hostility that I closed them down. And I can remember evidence of it years ago. I'd been traveling. I did the three, four years, you know, like backpacking mm. around the world with no money, getting very thin, great for a diet. That's all I'm saying. And I can remember this guy called Chris and I was relocating vehicles and that's what we were doing. And I was relocating a vehicle from Darwin, which is like Northern Territory, all the way down to Cairns and all the way across. And um, it was a heavy duty kind of trip. And yeah. we took a group of guys who'd all put money in and we all went. And there was this guy, Chris, and he said something about religion. And I literally apparently closed him down. Now, I didn't know that for years. And then this girl got in touch with me and was like, oh, I still keep in touch with Chris. And he was apparently terrified of me. And it's only on reflection that I realized that my fear of rejection by the world around me was enough to make me reject pretty much everyone. Yeah. Because if you stuck with me, in spite of my hideous <laughs> attitude, I knew you were cool with who I was. Yeah. So I can almost identify with the way that you're talking about people who just go, yeah. fuck off, unless you accept me exactly as yeah. I am and use the right terms, you're not in my world. It's a safety yeah. net. I mean, I do kind of understand why the anger is there because, as I said at the beginning, with segregation anyway, where they don't feel like part of the community. I can understand why they have the reactions that they do, but it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword, Catch-22. Yeah, you, you counterproductive. Get pissy and then people get angry. Yeah. And I think there has to be kind of a level that you can find where people are educating each other learn something, speak to people, learn their experiences and let them learn from you. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to have a completely different experience to somebody who is transgender or who is pansexual or who is gender non-binary. I'm going to... I don't understand, but I can empathise. And that's what I want to do. I want people to talk to me and to uh, educate me and just be able to say, this is how I feel about my life, this is how I view my life, and go from there. Yeah. And that's why I'm more than happy to uh, use correct terms with people mm. because they've educated me and they've been decent enough to talk to me and I've been decent enough to listen. Yeah. I but guess education is probably the, 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 yeah. the only way forward, really, isn't it? To educate everybody. You is know? it weird as a white heterosexual man, though, thinking about having to figure out terms, you know, just from your point of view? <sighs> it doesn't worry me. Um, it worries me if I offend somebody because I don't like mm. offending anybody. Um, but as you do, I, I'd I'd try and I mean I'm quite non-judgmental when uh, within life anyway. You know, it's it's, it's so I wouldn't <clears throat> I wouldn't be offended if I offended them. But I'd do what you do. I'd say yeah. apologies. Oh, uh, yeah. Just just let me know. Um, I think I offend people all the time. Yeah, I'd, I mean I I'd, I I'd, I really have no care what. People want to be called, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, I will just happily sit there and. I'm like terrible. Say, I make assumptions yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know, I do. But, yeah, I, I will. I mean, I it's, it's hard not sorry. to be. Assum it's hard not to make an assumption. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I like, do yeah. offend people. Mister, not think, assumption. I think, you do. I think you do make assumptions because it's just how society yeah. is. Yeah. It's, how, it's how, how you view. It's how you view the world. And um, but I will always say, if I know somebody is part of the community. I will always say, and it's obvious that they're not one way or the other, I will say, how do you prefer to be known? Yeah. But if it's obvious that they are female and they're unabashedly female or unabashedly male, I will refer to them as male pronouns, unless I'm told otherwise. It's yeah, such yeah. an interesting time, isn't it? Yeah. No, it, it, is, it, is. It, is. Yeah, it is an interesting time, I find that. I mean, I think you've got to have a bit of confidence within yourself to be able to ask that yeah. question. You know... Um, like to sit down and say, okay, then like, if you don't mind me asking, what would you, you know, yeah. I think you've got to be confident to ask that question. I, I think there's a lot of people who would be quite sort of The person sits there going, what the bloody hell do you yeah. mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Totally, yeah. I'm clearly a man. And you're like, you know, it's like, oh shit. I mean, that, that's that, that, my that, offense If someone hasn't got any confidence, yeah. then people, people, you know, because if you can handle yourself in conversation, you can be confident, you can ask that question. Yeah. Like obviously, you can, Andy. Yeah. And then if they say something like, I'm so I'm sorry, I do apologise. Yeah. I'm just trying, I don't want to offend you in any other way. You know, yeah. but there's a lot of people that sit and, and just be sat shitting themselves thinking, I'm going to offend whatever I say. I want to do, you know what I mean? So I think that the best way forward is to be like that. Yeah. And I think, <coughs> I mean, 
I'd like to think that most most people would wouldn't take offence if you asked that. My mum would, wouldn't would have a clue. Not. My mum would not have a clue how to deal with it at yeah. all. I think we're talking about a massive generational divide. Oh, huge. I mean, this is what Could I mean, you imagine? Even... I mean, my mum would walk in what you looked like, she would assume. Yeah. And then if you said to her, I'm sorry, I identify as non-binary, she'd yeah. just ask whether you wanted a latte. <laughs> Well, this you is know, to be, the, 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 it just it, it wouldn't compute. And she's a lovely woman, and yeah. she, she's not that she can't be educated. It's just that it won't make sense. Mm. So my generation, your generation, we're making sense of the new generation of experience yeah, and understanding. Exactly. Well, in my opinion, in my opinion, I just think that you know, you know, times have changed through history. Okay, you know, and it's just like look at the. Before the Industrial Revolution, then the Industrial Revolution, before this, then this, then that, then this, then the technical, te- the digital age. Oh, you know, and I just, you know, and people have grasped it with open arms. And I just think mm. uh, we heard a, a comedian say a while back um, on one of the social media things at the end of his, ske- uh, his stand up, he just said, Look, get a grip, get used to it. Times yeah. have changed. There's no going back. You can't suddenly reverse it. So with people with these bigoted views and it's just, just stop. Just times have changed. Mm. You know, it's not even evolution. It's been there forever, and it's like this is just. And because of the way society is now, yeah. and it will never change. It will never revert back no, to the old bigoted ways and, and blindness of what people thought. It's you almost know? like a constant evolution of society. It's a constant evolution of, of how people react to new situations, and as each generation sort of dies out, the more yeah. open people are to what people can do. I mean, you'll always have the younger generation who have been brought up and there will be prejudice there. Yeah. And that can't change. Well, even cultural, there's cultural standards as well. Like, you know, as much as we're talking about, you're talking about that from a very white Western perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest, it's not the same to any stretch and any degree is, shall we say, very, very strict Orthodox Islamic or Jewish, Mm. probably Sikh Mm. and Hindu communities. Yeah, but then even, yeah, but even then, they need to start looking. They need to start looking at their scriptures, I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm not saying you that know, they don't, but that you're talking about religion versus culture. Yeah. Culture yeah. is another issue. Yeah. And what Andy was saying as well is that actually, you know what, even in white Western experience, there's a hell of a lot of people who are uneducated oh, yeah. or who don't wish to be educated. And if you're born into that family, yeah. you're right, you're growing up going, yeah. he's a queer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And even when you hear that, well, okay, even if somebody throws that insult, we've owned yeah. it now, it's still an insult. Oh, yeah. Like my friends, when I remember going to university and my mates calling themselves dykes, you know, that was the language they adopted. They were the t shirts mm. that they wore, you know, dykes, so what? You know, mm. that was that was the, what they were. And it was the ownership. And I used to kind of be like a bit stuck in between. I'd be like, I'm not sure that I really want to own something that has been thrown at people because yeah. of negativity. But then I also see the power in taking it back and going, well, you yeah. know what, it doesn't matter. I, I get I confused think... by that, Andy. Do you get yeah. confused well, I, by I that? I think with the, with the word queer, when it's when it's used by the community it's I'm more about of, not fitting any kind and of and having you know referring to myself as queer or refer, or saying to somebody hey queer something like that yeah. when it's used in that context it's a similar it's a similar way that the n word is yes. used in the black community yeah. and obviously I'll, I I won't say it That's because fine, it's fine, yeah. we but, all know what it is um in that sense, they're taking the power Back, of that word yeah. away from people who have the prejudice. So that's why the word queer is so similar to the N-word in the black community, yeah. that I'm taking that power away from you. I'm calling myself queer. If you call me queer, so fucking what? Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I do. Yeah, I mean, that is exactly why people do mm. that. They appropriate those words yeah. so that people can't throw it at them. But I just remember having that kind of sense of discomfort because I guess that it's a bit like I suppose there'll be a point in time ideally where we're just human beings and we just have our sexual preferences and that doesn't even need a name to some degree it is what it is we are what we are I mean you look at the statistics now for females in the 40s and 50s having sexual experiences with the same gender it's incomparable to what it was 50 years ago I mean like it's just everyone's going well actually there's a permission base where there's a permission base then we can experiment and when we experiment we find out we like things that we didn't know that we liked I think there is much more about that kind of experience and acceptance but I still think you know you said something that I hope is true that it will never go back but we've seen that things go back Mm. and it's almost like we must never get almost lazy 
in yeah. biting because that's where things go wrong. Yeah. It's complacency. It is. It's complacency in feeling like, oh, it's mostly there. But no, you have to keep fighting. I mean, there have been generations of people before me, and there are people who are still alive who fought for the rights that I have. Yeah. Now. I mean, I wrote an article because it was in response to um, some twinky little thing from London who wrote uh, an article for Attitude magazine basically saying that the younger generation of gay people shouldn't feel obliged to learn gay history because they're too busy having fun. And I was like, oh, girl. I was like, I went straight in there and I typed a response. No, I totally agree with you. And I, and I said that um, you may not feel obligated to learn, but you should. Yeah. Because you are allowed to have fun because of these people That's who right. fought for you. Yeah. I mean, next year is the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall riots in New York. And that was the start of the biggest gay rights movement in history. And... When you think about it, it's only 50 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. You uh, look back at the British government when they yeah. were trying to petition for legalisation. They yeah. were having to be heard in the same line as paedophiles. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. That white papers would be going forward and you were kind of grouped <laughs> together with, oh, let's look at all the sexual deviants yeah. together, these homosexuals. And yeah. women, let's be honest, thanks, Queen Victoria, you didn't even get a look in because she didn't even think that lesbians existed. So it was only not. homosexuality that <laughs> yeah. was outlawed. Yeah. That whole kind of understanding and change is something yeah. that I think is only beginning to have us in place. But I'm yeah. with you 100%. Yeah. Know your history. Know your Learn. fighters. I know my suffragettes. Yeah. You know, they gave me my yeah. emancipation. It's a bit like when people start going on about, we're pacifists. I'm a pacifist, yeah. right? Give me a gun. I'm not going to shoot anyone unless they're mm -hmm. hurting my kids yeah. or my dogs, then I'm going to kill them. But, you know, or maybe they're a celebrity who's not mm. aware of how entitled they are. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I've not killed anyone yet. Just want to have that disclaimer in there. <laughs> Nor have I got a gun, so no one needs to worry about me. But when people talk about the war, right, I know that our historical figures were yeah. racist. Probably a lot of them oh, were yeah. women beaters. You know, if you looked into the history of them, they were probably definitely all drunks, cokeheads and opium heads, right? Because oh, yeah. who wouldn't have if it would have been available? That's the way society rocked, right? Yeah. But you can't say they didn't have meaning. Oh, you can't yeah. say that being freed from potential Nazi, you know, amount, you know, you can't say that that isn't important yeah. and we can't rewrite history we can only take and learn from it and I kind of hate that whole wanting to scrub out the bad stuff people are full of bad you know yeah. and they're full mm -hmm. of good yeah. but if the good outweighs the bad regarding the impact that they had oh, yeah. even if it's just from a horribly white western centric perspective which I am aware of my white privilege mm. I'm aware of it very very much but you can't change it and it's the same with things like gay rights yeah. and all of those there was a Absolutely. there was a coming to of actually people yeah. working hard to do that you know yeah I, I think with with the gay rights at the moment it's there's kind of we're kind of at a crossroads with with what's happening in certain side of things and here's where I, where I get a bit controversial and people I like controversial but how but how can we grow and learn if you know we always say isn't it it's people people change the world by being individuals yeah. you don't change the world by following everybody else's points mm, of true. view no bloody organisations ever change the world one person the Louis Pasteur's the Bill Gates yeah. so be controversial mm -hmm. Well, my controversial thing is... If it's is, anything about murdering, don't do it. No, <laughs> it's don't not, about, it's no. not about murdering, it's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, this is about the whole Christian bakery debate. Oh, right, yeah, where they got sued. Yeah, uh, I... And I, people are really going to hate me for this one, but when it comes to Christian bakeries and people wanting gay cakes made, and these Christian bakers don't say no... Don't go to a Christian bakery. Yeah, they say no. I say, yes, it's upsetting, yes, it shouldn't happen, but you're not going to change their mind. They are militant Christians, and what you should do is find a place that is going to take your money. Yeah. You know, because when you sue them and you make it public, you give them publicity, and then you get all the other people crawling out of the wood woodwork to support them. The, yeah, yeah, I think, I it's, think giving it's giving really, them a platform, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. giving them a platform. Yeah. But not just that, though. I think it's interesting because I think I, I think I know where you're going, and I'm, yeah. I'm here as well. Look, how can you ask somebody who is 
not what so we're C of E born C of E you know they put it on your birth certificate mm. fortunately in our C of E you can do anything and be anything <laughs> like our vicar for example because mm. we had to take the kids for five years to school to church to get them into the school that we wanted mm. them to go to it was a church school it was one of them five years five years and we went we went and we learned a lot yeah. about tolerance because our vicar was like if you just want to come to get your kids in school, come and get your kids in school. If yeah. you're gay, come and get married here. If you're honestly, it was the most. We we believe in the big bang. We just think that the God was the bang. They yeah. were so moderate, right? Yeah. But you're right. If you're not moderate, if yeah. you live your life, yeah. And it's the Bible, Bible in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think the big God is going to yeah. send you to hell? Yeah then really it's unfair to expect you to change yeah. your views because of conservative kind of yeah. changes within our society the to become is, more liberal. The thing freedom of speech works both ways. You're right. They, uh, you have the right to be who you are, but so do they. They have the right to refuse to serve you based on religious grounds because that's what they truly, truly believe. They have the right to say that, but I have the right to think they're an asshole for it. Yeah, definitely. They are assholes. You know, freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. No, exactly. Or freedom from opinion. Or freedom from opinion, exactly. Yeah, just to let you know, all Christian bakers who refuse gay people cakes of any sort, don't like it. It should not happen, though. It shouldn't happen. No, it's ridiculous. No, it's ridiculous. Also, I'll tell you why else it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because there is like one saying in the Bible that refers really to homosexuality being an abomination, Mm -hmm. but there's about 7,000 about money. So unless the Christian bakers aren't taking any money... Ah, the joy of Leviticus. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Leviticus is pretty cool for quite a lot of those. Um, So throw a bit of Corinthians in there as well. So, but the truth is that there is an irony there, isn't there? So I agree Mm. that it's very hard when people have those beliefs because you can kind of break them down and throw them out of the window within one minute, but it's important for them. Much like I... I'll tell you what really blew my mind... Um, I want everybody to be able to get married in church. It's yeah. fine, yeah. But I kind of, part of me want is, wants to go, because like my, I was brought up by a feminist. So my mum says she will not step foot in front of in a church unless it's for a special occasion like a funeral. Yeah. Or, and there's quite a few of them these days because mm. she's quite old. Um, and they call it a special occasion, a funeral? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it just is, a really sad occasion, it really. It's kind of a special, special occasion. Special, but it brings right. everyone together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's still special. Somebody has died. That's a pretty special situation. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd call what it. Are you, what are you calling an average occasion? It's just bloody died. Uh, I'd call it. <laughs> no, it's a funeral, isn't it? It's, like, it's a sad occasion. It is yeah. a sad occasion, but it's still a special occasion. It's like, oh, look at her. Okay, you're not. Dead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> bloody, bloody hell, here we go. Another average ordinary buffet. I know, I know yeah. what you mean, but I'm just saying, my mum will step into church for occasions that, yeah. in her view, are special enough to let her go into a church. Right, yeah. She hates patriarchy. She feels Ooh. that it's male-dominated, blah, 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 blah. And so she brought me up to kind of go, well, marriage is kind of against people who have any kind of difference to, you know, for example, if you're gay and you're yeah. tortured by the church, why yeah. do you want to step into the church? But the truth is, it matters to people. Yeah. It matters to people who, like, in the church that we used to go to, you would be completely okay. A vicar would marry you tomorrow and everybody would just be thrilled that you were there, gay, straight, or otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know, numbers yeah. are a big thing for the C of E yeah. right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Literally, anybody who wants to go to the C of E, go, accepted, any situation. Well, here's, here's the interesting thing. My mum is actually Christian. She's a Baptist. Yeah. She goes to Baptist church. And, well, when I first came out as gay, it didn't go down particularly well. Did they pray for you? Hmm? Did they pray for you? <laughs> you all but got together and prayed. We'll did, sort it, this one. <laughs> Just all have to sit yeah, down, hold hands and pray. You'll she, be fine. She grew and she evolved. And she is the most loving, caring, amazing mother now. I mean, she accepted my partner as part of the family now. He is part of the family. Uh, but do you feel but, like your relationship strengthened because of yes, that journey? So absolutely. she initially just didn't want you to be gay? She did not. I, I think it was because... It, for her, it was all right when other people were gay. But when it was yes. her own son, yes. that's when it became a very complicated thing in her mind because she just did, she didn't expect it. I mean, I don't know how she didn't, but she <laughs> she didn't see it. She just thought I was a little bit of a, a flamboyant He's boy. He's quirky. Yeah. He's quirky, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's what she thought. And when, He's just got great first, taste in clothes. We don't yeah. know what to do, but, you know. Yeah, and when, I, and when I first came out, it was very difficult. We did have some very difficult times, but I stuck with it. 
I educated her, I helped her, and she's realised that I was still her son. I just happen to like boys. It must be so hard for people yeah. who get the opposite reaction. Oh, yeah. It must be horrifying. I can't that. imagine life without my mum and dad. Yeah. What about your dad? Uh, he was the same as mum to begin with, and it took a bit longer for him to sort of accept it, but he got to the point where he actually apologised to me for how he treated me. He just didn't know how. He'd, ne he'd never been the sort of person that was like completely open with how he was because my parents are slightly older. My mum is 72, my dad's 70. So they were of that generation of the 40s and 50s where it wasn't really a thing, wasn't talked about. So they found it difficult to sort of accept that their youngest son yeah. was gay. And what about kids and stuff for you? You ever think about having children? I would like children one day. I have I a friend like who's surrogate for her. She's on a third surrogate at the moment. I, I would probably like to, to surrogate. Yeah. I always have this feeling that, I mean, I'm, I'm not against people who adopt. It's an honourable thing to do. It's absolutely honourable thing to do. But for me personally, I like the idea of having a child that's biologically mine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I can't, I'm more than willing to adopt. Yeah, my friend's on her third surrogate. So she's um, surrogated for two um, gay couples, gay male couples, and yeah. one straight couple, but she prefers gay male mm. couples, actually. That's her, yeah. her preference is that. Um, yeah. And she's just halfway through her pregnancy now. And I'm like on the forum because I, like, I kind of always go, I'm always interested mm. in like what's going on. And just how many you know same-sex couples are just desperate and of course for men it's so much more challenging because a woman can get a sperm donor yeah. and it is quite cheap actually to do that whereas for you guys you if you're doing a surrogacy yeah, yeah. yeah craigslist <laughs> absolutely like, just go out yeah. just go out for the night yeah. um but definitely for men that's a more bigger challenge but i just think yeah. it's incredible that people like that exist and i oh, do yeah. i do find yeah. that and actually you know they've done some research and mm. the research suggests that when it comes down to best parents, it turns out that same-sex couples tend to fare as better parents. I hate to say that. That's not suggesting that my kids are going to end up in prison, although there have been some occasions where we have <laughs> questioned that possibility. Cybercrime. We're not going to talk about that cybercrime. It's <laughs> the whole of the podcast. It never really happened. Let's just pretend that never was said. <laughs> Tide will have that reminded for the rest of his life. He my will. eldest son. We're never going to let that go. And um, We will do a podcast on that one day, but not whilst he's still living with us and speaking to us. Um, <laughs> but the truth is, though, that that kind of whole pathway mm. is just so bright and new and yeah. full of opportunity it must yeah. be exciting for you yeah. to have that kind of i suppose normalization in yeah. our society i like the idea of just normalizing who i am as a person just it shouldn't be an issue it shouldn't I, be an I, issue I mean too. i'd love it to get to the point where people don't have to come out they just are. i get it yeah you know that's that you know what that, that i've chatted about this before and i think it's you know i don't know how long it'll take Mm. Maybe it's not in our life. I don't know, you know, but it, it would be nice for just people just to be yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. I don't get why everybody's got to have their own. I, I get it. I do get, yeah. you know, communities and the way people are. Yeah. They have, like, you know, it's people like to own things, you know, yeah. but it would be nice that like you just said to be able to just be mm. me. But I don't feel you like know, you need, have. I don't feel like you need something to define you no. as a person. You don't need a special letter in the like LGBT. A, whatever they are now, I don't know what they are, then people get offended by that. But you don't need a special letter to define who you are as a person. You just feel naturally inclusive, like yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah. I feel naturally inclusive. Like I don't care yeah. what you are or who you are, as long as you're nice. I do like. I have a rule, and it's like you better not be an asshole because if well, you're yeah. an asshole, I don't want to know you, and yeah. that's it. And you know, I have like a really strong asshole monitor. Yeah, well, we can have. <laughs> we, yeah, I get that. We can have. Um, everybody can just be. Them, nice. me, yeah. except for one thing, and that's yeah. assholes. Yeah. You're an asshole, you're, so you're, you're in that, you're yeah. in that yeah. band. Yeah. You're an us, we're with the, yeah. Yeah. we're the them, you're the us. Yeah. No, you're the us, you're the them. One of the ways. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, I, I prefer to refer to the community as the rainbow community, because lovely, we're all under the rainbow title. flag. That's a really nice, but that's yeah. a really positive yeah. kind of statement as well. I mean, yeah. I just think that that positivity, because whenever I see that rainbow flag, yeah. it makes me feel happy. Yeah. I don't think it just makes me feel happy because it is incredibly pretty. <laughs> and yes, for appropriating that as anybody's flag, <laughs> yeah. it genuinely incites in me hope. Yeah. I mean, God, there's so much segregation and, yeah. you know, there's so much pain in society. Yeah. I don't know, we're going through a bit of a crazy time in the world. Like, mm. I'm under no illusion. We were driving back 
the other day. I think it was Mother's Day. We're taking my mum out, obviously, because it's mm. Mother's Day. And I have no imagination. So it's either a weekend break on Groupon or it's a meal out. So I've taken her out for breakfast. And we were driving back and I just said to Pete, I said, you know what? My kids were in the back of the car. I said, right now, can you imagine the just pure bliss for somebody like from Syria would experience just having this totally normal to us experience of just going out to something to eat in the morning, getting safely in a car, driving back on a road that's safe and getting home and just walking in a house. Mm. The most ordinary, because one of the things about our society in the Western world is, I think there's a bit of an indulgence, right? I think we have time for a lot of things that we don't need that much time for, and that doesn't necessarily make us happy. So when you look at rates of depression in countries where they are dying of famine, there's not really a lot of depression, even though it's very depressing because people mm. are trying to survive. So yeah. therefore they're thinking about how to operate in a survival way. Yeah. The UK and in the Western world per se, we have time to think and ruminate and yeah. explore. And it's great on one level, you know, I'm analytical. It, half the time I love it, half the time it makes me really sad. Mm. You know, that I can kind of think and think and think and think and think to a point where actually I've not really dealt with what I needed to think about and I've forgotten what I was thinking about initially. You know, that's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. So not to suggest for one minute that mental illness is indulgent. It's no. awful. But time gives us opportunity to think sometimes about things that don't need that much thought. Yeah. And what you're saying from what I'm hearing, I'm certainly from what you're saying as well, is it's almost like there just needs to be this kind of complete washout of yeah. attitudes and just go... Yeah. Let's just be nice to each other. Yeah. Let's don't just forget all of this. That's it. Yeah, don't, don't be a dick. Be a dick. To yeah. And if you're not, <laughs> everyone's going to be way, way better. Yeah. And it sounds really stupid to put it down to such a reductive position as be nice to people. Yeah. But I don't know whether it's my roots. I don't know whether it's because I was brought up believing that the archer's remedy, a cup of tea, would solve everything with your neighbour. But I stand by it. Well, when, I it stand comes by down, it. when it comes down to the whole bones of it, it's. If you're nice to people, I mean, everybody loved will be that we listen to this and going, ah, but there's this and there's that and there's, mm. and there's, like, and there's politics and there's... Ta- Emma just talks common sense yeah. and I'll get berated for just, I don't oh. know what, what I'm meant to talk. Can I just put it out there? Is it nonsense I'm meant to talk? Does that make me good? Because <laughs> common sense, somebody keeps, I keep getting people throwing this sentence at me. Ah, oh, she just states the obvious. What I'm, I, <laughs> yeah. is, if that, I don't get mm. it. So, okay. But well, because just, if you didn't state the obvious, people will be like, why don't you just state the obvious? And from yeah. now on, I'm going <laughs> to do only confusing nonsense, and that should appease people. Hey, maybe this podcast could be the beginning of something oh, where people of, just start uh, to think. The beginning of Emma's nonsense. It's just <laughs> nice. Let's just be nice. Just, yeah. Whether even, it's nonsense or not, it should be just people being nice. Mm. Even this, so we're sat across the table now, yeah. and you think about the fact, I mean, obviously, I'd have been burnt at the stake. I mean, I, <laughs> I would have survived more than a few years back in the old days and have me as a witch straight away. Um, and Which is ironic because you are actually related. I am <laughs> related to Alice Nutter, last witch to be hung on Pendle Hill, I believe. Um, although not quite as exciting because when I told that story in my RE class when I was 14, another girl in the class had exactly the same relationship. So I think we're probably all related to Alice Nutter somewhere along the line but yes I would have been burnt at the stake for my views and opinions mm. but you white heterosexual male very very much identify as white heterosexual male and you would not have had a situation 150 years ago where your relationship could have been because mm. you would have not accepted him and mm. mind you you probably wouldn't have accepted yourself either no no you probably carted yourself off to the local infirmary probably you know yeah. ask for some electrical treatment on yeah, your brain do you know because that was BCT, you yeah know. and we, I mean, we, we may, might laugh about it but I mean yeah. that was how it was oh, no but that was how, reality yeah that was how reality has this changed you know it's insane yeah. it's wonderful Absolutely. even a woman I mean I'm sat with you yeah I mean that's if you just think about it yeah the fact that I'm a woman one I can swear Mm. Secondly, I can disagree. Yeah. Thirdly, I have my own bank account and you can do nothing about it. And most importantly... <laughs> I, would, I don't want to look at any bother. I have no opinion and I'm not judging you. Me, <laughs> can't do any of those. And you're a gay guy and yeah. you can just sit and openly talk about it. Yeah. That is revolutionary. When yeah. you, We don't oh, think yeah. about the little miracles. It's what you said about history. Yeah. We don't think about those little miracles that are actually mm. massive. And if you think, you, this is, this, and it's all really just in its infancy. To, yeah. You know, all oh, yeah. of that, literally in its infancy. So 
really the generation that we're in, the new generations who are being born now, they're mm. being you know, exciting times. Yeah, isn't it? it is. I mean, it is. It I is. want to How ask can you, you about not think that it's like I know, crazy, it's, inc- it's brilliant. We're seeing it's history, bro- it's brilliant, in the making. And it's broken and it's yeah. messed up, and yeah. we're all arguing with each other, and nobody knows what's happening, but it's still mm. amazing. But yeah. also, fandom, you talked about fans or something like that. You said to me, Ask me about fans, was oh, it? The, oh, fandoms, yes, the um. The whole idea of what I call fangirling. <laughs> I call it fangirling, but what it really is, is blind obsession. <laughs> Tell me. Well, I don't like it when somebody is so obsessed with something that no matter what that person or TV show does, they will support it. Yes. I find that so unhealthy to do that. I believe that a true fan is somebody who can be objective. I mean, I, lo- I love Beyonce. Yep. Fabulous singer. But I can also say when she's released a shit song. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. There's been a few, there's Some of her there. songs I don't like. No. And as a Give fan, me an example of one that you really don't like. Oh. Uh, the first half of the Lemonade album. I really didn't like the Lemonade album. Really. I like the second half. Anything after Daddy Lessons I think she's was very, good. Yeah, I think she's but very But the first angry. half of the album is just like... Um, she may as well just have put, fuck like, you, you had Jay-Z. too much influence by Jay-Z. Fuck it's you, not Jay-Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but also I don't like you yeah. at the moment. Stop but it's, sleeping it's, with women. <laughs> but it's a blind obsession that frightens me in a way because, I mean, there's a controversy with Logan Paul, the YouTuber. Oh, yeah, we know him, yeah. Yeah, he, oh. he yeah. filmed a dead body in the suicide forest in Japan. Yeah, and he did... Do you know what's funny, right? We've talked about this. I talked about it on True Geordie's podcast. I did True you Geordie's did? podcast, and I talked about it there. Mm. Now, he got slated, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. people were saying he was laughing. His reaction was quite normal. Like, as a psychological, mm. you know, when you're watching it with that eyes, yeah. that nervous laughter yeah. and bit daftness, when you don't know how to react, yeah. you've not got a blueprint of how am I meant to react to somebody hanging in a forest? Yeah. You just react with your automatic responses. And for yeah. him, it was just, he's a bit stupid, yeah. isn't he? He's a bit thick. Yeah, he's a bit. He's yeah, a bit yeah. on the. He's a bit on the jock side, isn't he? Um, no, I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> a, bit, a bit on the jock side. <laughs> I'm not sure that KSI should be fighting him though, because I reckon you can punch him in the head pretty hard, and he probably won't go down. He won't feel anything. Yeah, probably just need to kick him in the legs. That's probably how you'll get him. Yeah. 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 I reckon KSI might do him. Anyway, that's another podcast. Yeah. Go it, tell it, me. it does. Fight, it does fight me though that this obsession, because there were there were kids out there. These the kids of eleven or twelve years old who are defending what yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah. he's an idiot. And they will defend anything that he does. Well, there was, one, there was one kid, and this scared me what he said. He went, that guy, the dead body, should have been grateful to be in a Logan Paul video. I was like, what the hell? And I, I, I have to say, I'm assuming this that's kid why was an American kid, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an American kid, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's the guy, that's why the guy yeah. killed himself. There are stuff did dead it. bodies that want to be him dead body yeah. videos with Logan yeah. Paul. Yeah. I'm yeah. donating my body yeah. to Logan Paul. I'm going to do it because I want to be in one of his videos. <laughs> I'm hanging myself right now. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, it's like it's this idea of, obs- of obsession where this people can do no wrong. I don't like it and I find it so unhealthy. It yeah. is unhealthy. What I also find creepy is when kids refer to celebrities as mum or dad. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't under, you see these Instagram posts and underneath you see people going, Mum, Dad, and it's like what are you talking about? Why are you referring to them as mum or dad? You have parents. You see, this, this is, is the thing. You see, have parents. Why are you referring because to Because these young people have been born into the social media. Yeah. As you see, we're going to have to get you back, I think. Yeah. Because there's a whole new level of another podcast, I think, yeah. me, to go to on to with all this. But it's like you're saying there, there's, there's new, the new newborns into the born into social media, aren't they? Yeah. And that's in its infancy yeah. as well. So the, there's, they don't know how to handle it. I mean, yeah. we're running as adults are like sort of figuring out what yeah. to do with it, how to do it. You know, and we're watching people make these mistakes, but yeah. for kids, they're like, well, I think, oh, coming into it, like, just yeah. like, but oh, I think and social, then, media, social media feeds it. Yeah. Social yeah. media feeds the obsession because you're just one click away from a celebrity on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook. You're one click away from them, and when they respond to you, you almost feel validated in... in 
Oh yeah, like Mark talking. Hamill. Mark Hamill inboxed me. He did. And I, I was that. I, I'm, from then on, I'm a Jedi. You know, he's what like, I mean? literally. Yeah. Pete's Corey like Feldman ne- retweeted all my things. Yeah. I'm a Goonie. He's, like Pete is a massive obsession with Star Wars. So like we have all the toys and stuff, <laughs> and from originals, he keeps them all. And like Mark Hamill, I got in touch with Mark mm. Hamill, and I was like. My husband would really like it, and then we got in touch yeah. with you, didn't we? Like, oh, like, oh my god! Fit. And then he retweeted one of my, he retweeted one of my followers yeah. once as well. It's absolutely fine to be a fan and to collect things yeah, and yeah. to, uh, you know, I've never called him dad book. though. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I've never. I, will. I, I like, I've, I have the fortunate position of knowing lots of real, really lovely people in the celebrity world, and yeah. all the people who I follow on Twitter, I've met, and they are adorable. And it's as simple as that. That's the way I play the world. I like yeah. want to know that people are really, really nice, and they are yeah. really, really nice. Mm-hmm. But I kind of once watched a Citizen, what was it called? Citizen M? No, no, Citizen, what was it called? The one with the guy from, um, oh, the American got done by the CIA after living in Russia. Oh, you mean, um, uh, what do you call nah. it? Uh, uh, no, not, good, not good for, no, not no. Good for movie reviews. Snowden. Snowden. Ed Snowden, Snowden yeah. yeah. Uh, and I just said, it was Citizen 4. Yes, yeah, Citizen, Citizen 4. 4. Uh, okay. so Great I, movie. It's amazing. Amazing movie, because it's true. Yeah. Um, so Citizen Four, and I tweeted him, and he retweeted it, yeah. and I had a proper moment where I was like, guy in Russia, probably yeah. in Colditz. Who's, well, then like, when even... did that? Anonymous yeah. retweeted it, liked I was like, it. Anonymous yeah. in Sweden. I'm basically it. a political and it, activist. Yeah. And it was like, That's what he does all though. these people, like, under the thousands, like, love it, love it, love it. Yeah. It's just like, it makes you, like, I'm like, yeah. I, well, basically, I'm probably going to be yeah. president. We I'm thought, probably going to be president. We thought the like, CIA <laughs> were going to be knocking on the door and everything. We were like, I was hoping. It, yeah. I was hoping. Because well, I'm there's, always there's secretly always this niceness. There's always this niceness when a celebrity or somebody that you admire notices you on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, mean, I don't like internally scream. I'm, I'm not like, oh my god! No, no. I, I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Give me a bit of a warm fuzzy, a bit of it's dopamine. A warm yeah. yeah, but I, I had that. Too. It means that you're best mates. But well, you know what? You're right. Because what what happens is you'll if the, you'll say something. That will be because I'm sarcastic, you yeah. know, that's the way I live my life. If I, I laugh at everything, my, my little boy, well, he's not little anymore, he's nearly as tall as me, he's 15. Um, we were sitting the other day and somebody was having this really serious conversation. I was watching it and I just said to him, I said, I don't think I've ever had a serious conversation in my life. And my son went, I haven't either. He said, We don't have serious. I was like, What? I was watching this really, really serious conversation. I was thinking, I'm lacking because <laughs> I, obviously in therapy, I don't spend time in therapy laughing at my clients. Oh, <laughs> that trauma was hilarious. Tell me more. Obviously, the seriousness yeah. there. But like outside, I kind of just like everything's funny for me. Yeah. And you know, social media, you'll sometimes do that. Yeah. And then people will be like, I'm going to find where you live. I'm going to come and get you and I'm going to murder you in your sleep mm. and then I'm going to murder your family. And you actually half believe that this person really is capable of going and doing that, you know? Yeah. Obviously, really, we know that they're halfway through a chocolate cake and they've not been out for seven months and they can't get out of the gaming chair. Yeah. But that's not the point. It kind of gives you that sense mm. of, oh my God, there are yeah. people out there who are that obsessive. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I Do you ever get trolled? Do you ever get people being really, really negative? I don't, I'm not, I'm not big enough on social media to get trolled yet. So, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had people sort of disagree with some of the articles I've written and they've been a little arty about it, but I've always sort of stood by what I've said. I've said, you know, this is what I believe. This is only an opinion and it's my opinion and if you don't like it, whatever. I think that's about resilience, isn't it? Yeah. I also think being um, somebody who's gone through a journey like you did, particularly one where, first of all, you dealt with non-acceptance, yeah. then you dealt with working to acceptance and also forgiveness forgiveness because yeah. the thing that you said about your mum and you mm. was at no point did you judge her you allowed her to feel pain you yeah. allowed her to feel disappointment Absolutely. and then you allowed her to regrow in your relationship yeah. so nowadays when people throw stuff at you yeah it really can't affect can't, you because it, you've it been through off. it well as jinx monsoon would say what orthodox back yes that's yeah. my that's my thing in life and i've yeah. actually met jinx monsoon and i had my own slight fangirl moment but um, i love that she um, she was performing in Manchester and I came up here to watch it and amazingly I could see her in the green room because me and, and my partner were outside having a cigarette, don't judge me, I smoke, but um, we were sat outside, we could see her in the green room and we were like, oh my god, I was like 20 feet away from Duke Monsoon, hurrah! And, 
The doors come flying open. She comes tottering across the cobbles in, in her heels, parks herself next to me and asks for a light. And I was like, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Uh, outside, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Great. Inside, I was like, it's Steve Monsoon. I'm so happy. Uh, no, and then she sat talking to us for about 10 minutes. And... I just completely like because she was so normal. It's so nice though. Yeah. That. She was just, they there, there was no airs and graces at all to her no. at all. She just sat next to me for ten minutes talking, and I was like, "Okay, th- th- this is fine." It's like uh, I've had a few, I've had a few celebrities come into the cinema where where I work. Uh, I've had uh, Pete Postlethwaite came in, and I treated him I like a normal customer Pete because I knew he was there to just watch a film. He, yeah. he wasn't a, a premiere. He, he was an amazing he was, actor. He was just there watching a the film. Um, I've even served Prince William. I didn't realise it was him at first. I love that. Because <laughs> yeah, he, he came in pretty incognito. He came in in a baseball cap. He had his face down. I love everything. that. And he was there with like three or four of his mates. It was when he was out at RAF Shawbury. So yeah. A few years ago. And um, his mate came up to the counter and asked for uh, two tickets. Yeah. He went, oh no, make it four. He's paying. Pointing to this guy in a baseball cap behind him. And he walked up and I looked up and I went... With his black like, American Express, <laughs> where he, he can buy a, a mountain. Like yeah. He looks a bit like Prince William, doesn't he? And then he handed me his credit card, and it said his name on it. The name that he goes by, which is uh, Mr. W. Wales. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, shit, it's Prince William. <laughs> <laughs> That's and I was like, amazing. It is. Enjoy your film. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 what did they go and watch? Rambo. Oh. The new, uh, when they sort of like Brilliant. did a, a new Rambo, <laughs> yeah. he went I to watch that. that. And I That's... was like, okay, fine, Prince William's here. It's, oh, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> I, I try and sort of treat any any famous person as I would any other person because they're still people at the end of the day. Exactly. But however, if they are a dick... Yeah, that's yeah. right. They they go back to yeah. the, their, like their like island. Like you said before, when when they've been like um, on one of your other podcasts, when they said, "Oh, don't look him in the face." Oh, like, I know. It's like, unbelievable. I've still not got past that. No, it's like I don't like I don't no. like people like that. It's like, bitch, you got to that position because of people like me. Exactly. <laughs> I buy your merchandise. You exactly. Can I won't watch any more of his programs. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. That's brilliant. That. Brilliant. Well, it's a good way of ending the podcast. It is a good way of ending the podcast. We've actually gone over our normal time because it's Ooh, been so sorry. interesting. No, no, no it's <laughs> great. It's been lovely. But I think we will have to have you back to talk a little bit more about um, celebrity fandom and all yeah. things associated with that area. I think it's a great, a great podcast in itself. That fandom. I'm happy to come back. Yeah, more than <laughs> been welcome. served with some diet coke. <laughs> she provided me with coke. I'm happy to come back. <laughs> Sorry, just with Diet Coke. Just, Di- Di- you know, it's yeah, not the Di- white Di- stuff that can get us into a lot of pro- trouble. Ask mm-hmm. people who've been involved in Blue Peter about that. <laughs> right then, um, we'll finish today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching and listening. Thank you for joining us. It's a joy and it's so nice having a guest. Yeah. And it's been lovely listening. And as I've, been sat, I've got a bit of a cold, you see, so I'm sort of like sat here snivelling away. But <laughs> I'm I'm been, I've been listening because it's just been, I've been enthralled in the conversation. It's really, really, so. for a lacklustre performance, I think you'll find that is. Fortunately, even though I I have a cold. I've powered through, but never mind. All right, then, finish there. Take care. Thank you for coming. Cheers.